What's up, squad? This is the Scruff Squad Presents, the broadcast from the Burbs. We're coming to you live from Westchester, Illinois, 60154. As always, I'm your host, Danny Adams. Here with me is my co-host, Phil Martin. Thanks for tuning in. And our producers, Jimmy Adams and Sam Martin. It's the Diesel. Hey, what's going on? We've got a great show for you guys today, so stay in tune. All right, getting right into it, guys. Like we mentioned last week, G. Herbo and Dave East were missing from the uh, ciphers of the freshman class. Um, they finally released their cipher together a couple of days ago, I think it was, right? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, and uh, I'd definitely go check that out. That was probably one of my favorites out of all it of them, to be honest with you. It was awesome to see them on a song together. Yeah, it yeah. Was, they, their flow fit perfect, so yeah, definitely go listen to that. Yeah, and in other news, um, ASAP Ferg announces Still Striving, and uh, he said it's arriving soon, so uh, be sure to be on the lookout for that as well. Yeah, uh, the other day on Twitter, Lil Uzi Vert teases a new project called The Perfect Love Tape. He actually was uh, playing a video of himself dancing and singing to one of his own tracks from the upcoming tape, so I'm actually really excited to hear what he's got for us. Yeah, definitely. New Uzi's going to be awesome. Uh, And then, like we've talked about before, I write for Lyrical Lemonade, and we actually have a show coming up on Friday, uh, July 15th, a couple days away, um, with Made in Tokyo is headlining it with his brother, actually, Royce Rizzi, Ugly God, Superboy, Warhols, and more. Um, there is going to be some special guests like their last show Lil Bibby was a special guest so I'm expecting someone huge this time so be on the lookout for that once again Lyrical Lemonade show Friday July 15th so go buy tickets now yeah that's going to be a stacked lineup guys definitely go buy tickets for that for sure Um, not made in Tokyo but Tokyo released an EP the other day uh, called Community Service 2 Um, definitely check that out we're going to talk about it a little bit here but there was a lot of hot songs on there yeah, I mean, it's only like a, it's only a seven-song EP. Um, I think he just wanted to get something out. He actually had three uh, singles off of it. Um, one, Playing Fair with Joey Perp. Another one, Gang With Me with Vic Menza. And then one single one uh, of Teardrop. And um, I know Gang With Me came out first with Vic. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know that was going to be on a project at all until I finally saw it. And it was uh, all three of those singles are perfect, I think, for... Um, this project because he, he did a little bit of experimentation with it he's not this the same sound like um on wave theory he had a lot of like the social experiment type um instrumentals and stuff that he he rapped over and this one it's he switches it up a little bit what do you think jim yeah well i was gonna say that like i could definitely tell on some of the songs it was he's more of a dancer like chicago juke style um artist like off of wave theory you could hear that influence but this, I think the intro track was more of that Jukes dance style, but as he got deeper into it, you can definitely hear the hip-hop influence behind it. Like, he was more, it was more of a classic flow that he had going on, and I like to hear that side out of Tokyo, too. It just shows that he has quite the range as an artist. Speaking of uh, Teardrop, um, what Danny mentioned earlier, that was probably one of my favorite songs on there. Yeah. Either that or the... Um the beginning or the intro song which was the intro my calling or yeah, yeah that was that actually is. produced by knox Ford. yeah but produced by knox Ford. i was just going to mention that because it sounds like it could be something off coloring book like it has that right. same type of like beat and stuff and i know knox fortune produced a lot for coloring book he, uh, he well, was on, or no he was on he that one song on yeah. all night but right, he right, does produce for save money he produced uh for uh, leather corduroy's project which is joey perp and cammy um, he produced a couple tracks on there, and he just produces a lot for the collective of Save Money. So Right, and I know last week we were talking about how, like, the shift, we were talking a little bit about Kanye's album, how it's got the soulful feel, and, right. of course, Coloring Book has the soulful feel. It's just really cool to hear that intro, and it, I can't really tell if that's a, a, a church choir in it or not in the background, but it sure as hell sounds like one. So, right, right. And, you know, I just thought yeah, that definitely. was awesome. And I know on the, the second track, Therapeutic, I'm pretty sure he uses some auto tune in there, which yeah. Yeah, I know, did. like I've I know he dabbled with it a little bit in the past, but uh, he's got a really good voice, like what, whether it's singing or rapping. Right. So he doesn't use it a lot. He doesn't really need to. But I think that was a really cool sound to bring to it. Uh, personally, my favorite song is probably "Gang with Me," the the song with Vic Mensa, yep. uh, the first single that he released, and I just like it because. Their flow goes along with the instrumental, and both Tokyo and Vic Mensa both have that kind of same flow, the the da na na da like kind of yeah, stuff right, like over yeah, and yeah, over. Yeah. And great singing um, voice, by the way. Yeah. Oh, thank you. And um, yeah, so I I just think that was an awesome song to hear. Um, Teardrop was once again. Uh, I think we talked about that at, uh, last show or a couple shows ago. Yeah, we, yeah, we and um, yeah, it just it, it like I said, all seven of these songs kind of they have their own sound to it. Um, and like I said, I think he just kind of wanted to experiment to see what the fans liked um, f- going from song to song. Well, you mentioned um, in, what was it, Therapeutic, 
how he's got that auto tune in. Right. Well, if you listen to the beat in the background or the instrumentals and stuff in the background, it's it's a very like electric style beat. It's almost like a dance club beat in the background. Right. I think the auto tune fits really well with that. Well, that's what I was gonna say. Like he doesn't necessarily need it because he has a great voice, but I think he went with it because it was more of a style uh, mm-hmm. choice, just because. You know, like the. Uh, it was definitely out of the box. Yeah, for sure. I mean, whether people need it or not, I just think it's cool to use sometimes because it fits like the style of the song you're going right. for, and it definitely gave it a nice little touch. Yeah, definitely. Um, and now moving on, um, something I really am happy about, I'm really excited about, um, is Blank Face LP, Schoolboy Q's time. new album. Uh, I, I went out the day it came out, went and bought it, um, and I'm really glad I did. I mean, it's been, what, like two or three years, and. Um, do you guys think that this it was worth the wait? He did he put in his Dude, work and he made it last. I'm or? telling you, with the features on it, it was way worth the wait. I heard the whole thing Dude. through like multiple times. Yeah, I've been listening to it like, nonstop since it dropped. Like yeah, with all the features on it, I mean, I can see why it took so long to release, but I it was an awesome album. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned the features. I'll go through them in order. Uh, we have Kanye West, Jada Kiss, Lance Skywalker, the uh, one of the newer signees to uh, Top Dog Entertainment. E40, E-40, The Dog Pound, <laughs> SZA, Anderson Pack, Miguel, Justine Sky, Traffic, and TF. You actually skipped Vince Staples, too. Oh, yeah. What, what am that I, was one of my favorites. Yeah, that was yeah, one yeah. of the best songs on there, I think. Um, but, yeah, he um, has some great features, some legends, some new guys. I think he mentioned that the Traffic and maybe even TF, those are some of his boys from like his hometown. He kind of wanted to get them the recognition because he knew that they were putting in work and they were good. So... Um, he put him on the the track. Uh, what track is? Oh, uh, Tookie Knows Two, featuring Traffic and uh, TF, and that it's the last song on the album, and um, I think it's a perfect way to end it off. Uh, right. it, it just it. I think Tookie Knows was uh, the first one was on um, Oxymoron. If yeah, I'm not I, I don't mistaken. remember. I know I've heard the name Tookie. Yeah, Nose maybe before. it wasn't on Oxymoron, sure but it was on off of a past project. And um, I'm not gonna lie, the first one I wasn't a giant fan of, from what I remember. But Porch. this um, what? What are you, are you talking about? The song no, I'm Porch? talking about the first Tookie Knows. Oh, okay. I wasn't a huge fan of. I don't know. It just kind of. I think yeah, the beat was a little bit slower from what I remember. I don't really remember hearing it to be honest. And with you, well, I know I've heard it. I just remember not being in probably love with I, it. Yeah, but the, this second it, one, yeah. it like I said, I think it was awesome. And I feel that way a lot. Like there's certain songs that have like, um, like sequels that I'm in love with the sequel and not really the begin or the first one or the opposite. So one of the one of the things I loved about this project was that. I mean, I don't know all the production credits, but I know that he had a couple good, uh, like, big-name producers like that are popular in the game lately. Obviously, Metro Boomin and uh, 808 Mafia were on mm-hmm. Dope Dealer, I believe. Is that the song they were on? Uh, yeah, I know Metro Boomin was. I didn't know 808 Mafia was. I think was. they were. I mean, I remember hearing it in the beginning, their taglines. But okay. I just kind of like that he's... I mean, obviously, he's sticking with his own in-house production with... Uh, Lance Skywalker, but then he's also going out of the box a little bit. I'm assuming TDE has a lot of uh, in-house producers like Soundwave and uh, uh, Mixed by Ali, who does all their mixing and stuff, but like I said, he went out of the team this time, and I think it really added something to the project. Yeah, and something that I thought was really interesting, I feel like he almost took a page out of Kendrick Lamar's book, where Oxymoron, his his first uh, studio album, um, was pretty much all based around kind of his life his upbringing it had those hardcore gangster beats and he sounded really good over those but then like kind of like how kendrick was in good kid mad city but then when it came to to pimp a butterfly kendrick had kind of the more soulful um a different sound to it but he just wanted to experiment and kind of further his brand and sound so and i think that's kind of what schoolboy q did here because he's got songs where he still goes hard like on that part um, ride out with Vince Staples, groovy like Tony. yeah, Groovy Tony, all those. But then he has other songs like Whatever You Want, uh, featuring Candice P- Pile. Pile, I'm not sure how you say that. He has songs like that, uh, Big Body, stuff like that, and those are a little bit more soulful. Something I wouldn't necessarily pin Schoolboy Q on, but um, he does a great job handling those, and those are some ended up being some of my favorite tracks off yeah, of the album. Exactly. Did you guys ever notice that, like, on the album? I don't know. You you said you bought the album, right, Dan? Yeah, the other day. Did of. you notice the back? Like, when you look at the back of it in the song list, what do you guys know why he capitalizes all the H's? Oh, he's from uh, Hoover Street. Yeah, Hoover is that what Street. It is? Yeah, he, okay. He capitalizes figured... all the H's on everything. He does on that everything. And his, yeah, and tweets. Okay, I didn't... Yep. Everything. Yeah, it's oh. all. 
it's all capital H's, like, cool. yeah, all over. So, I, yeah, that's just I, something. I, like, just picked up on it now. Yeah. I have no idea. That's, it's that's it's almost kind of like what YG does, tr- changing the C's to B's, to B's and all yeah. of it, like, still brazy. It's like that. that's his signature thing. Yeah. Um, just like Schoolboy changes cool. all the, the H's to capitalized. Um, another thing that I – another song that I loved off of this, it's called uh, John – Muir? Or me? I don't know I don't how to know. pronounce it. It's the 10th track. Um, I thought it was really interesting. I thought that the song was really good at first, but then I actually just recently, in the last day or two, saw um, on a question or a Q&A with Schoolboy on Twitter that um, he completely freestyled that verse. Like, or like th- that whole song was oh, a complete wow. freestyle. Oh, yeah, I, you oh. would have never known from listening to it, but yeah, he said it was a, a freestyle, and I think that that's great because he also said that ended up being one of his favorite tracks off of the that's album. Crazy. and um, yeah, that's, I mean, there's that, but also at the end of that part with Kanye West, um, Kanye's like at, towards the end of the song, Kanye talks, like continues to rap. It's yeah. like a second, like mini verse. And that whole thing is a, a freestyle yeah, right. as well. If you, guys, yeah. if you guys hear it on the radio, you don't hear the freestyle part. So no, yeah, you definitely yeah. have to go out of your way to check it out. Yeah, they yeah. usually cut that out. I'm not sure why, but... Um, it's just I mean, it's a long it. track. I think it's, it's about... It. I think it's yeah. marked at 513 on the album. So, mm-hmm. I mean, radio tries to, you know, yeah, keep get it as much... three or four. Well. So, yeah, that makes, sounds about right. Because I think yeah. freestyle was, what, two minutes, a minute? It was, I don't yeah, know. I don't remember. It was towards the end of the song. But, yeah, I mean, like I said, that... Like, you never hearing Kanye West and Schoolboy Q on a track like I never thought I would hear that like I would imagine maybe a Kendrick and Kanye song which I'm not do they don't they don't have a song so, no. yet right I, I know Kendrick so. well, opened for Kanye on his last tour but I don't crap, think they have a track together yeah I can't think of anything right now off the top of my head I could be wrong but we're probably missing um, something here. yeah Schoolboy and we Kanye definitely they are, definitely worked sure really well together might. um and so there's that but then there's also another song I want to talk about called By Any Means um it doesn't oh, say sorry, I don't mean to cut you off uh yeah, Kendrick and Kanye are on the track on uh oh what's it called? It's got the da 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 yeah, that singing's not helping me. I, I think I kind of know what you're talking about, but I, I don't know. Your singing isn't really helping me. Okay, so whatever. No more parties so, in LA. Yeah, no more parties. Yeah, oh, no more parties. It was yeah. How did I forget? Yeah. The K, man. Okay, yeah, 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 I don't know how I forgot that. <laughs> okay. Um, I just wanted to get that out of the way. I knew we were yeah, missing. No I, there, there's probably more. I thought there I was know. some. But yeah. I don't know. All right, yeah. But um, like I said, uh, the eighth track, by any means, it doesn't have anybody tagged in there um, as a feature, but this song, when I first heard it, um, it reminded me like it could have been something off of Section 80 because the the hook it sounds like uh, like Kendrick um, in like the higher pitched up um, like singing yeah. or whatever on the on the hook. He's not credited, but um, I think we discussed. I think it that. is Kendrick, and then he has that like deep voice where like you hear um, in I forget what song off of Section 80 or there's it's on a couple songs. The really deep voice um, comes in in that right. hook too. Um, yeah, I know I know what you're talking about. It's right in the beginning. Um, yeah, well, Jimmy, real quick, I know Shit. you mentioned I'll Vince Staples yeah. was one of the features. I know, was he unincluded on the track list? Is that no, why? No, he's on, he's on okay. there, yeah. It's yeah. right out featuring Vince Staples. It's it was uh, fuck, your, fuck Your Ethnicity, right? That's, that's Is what that what it was. Yeah. Okay, I can remember. Yeah. No, yeah. Because um, I was going to say, I know we've talked about... He's at the end, too. In the, sorry. I can't yeah, well, there's a, there's a couple of people that we... Um, you know, like Kendrick and people that we think are on it, but maybe just aren't listed. Right. And so... Well, yeah, like, just going off of that, I know the first track called Torch, um, I'm pretty sure Anderson Peck is on that, too. He it doesn't have like it, He doesn't it? have his own, um, yeah. like, verse or anything like that. It's just he kind of ad-libs a little bit in it. Um, and he wasn't given credit for that, but late, he's on the actual song called Blank Face, which is kind of like the the title song for the obviously album yeah. blank face LP and he gets credit for that. So I don't know if there's any significance to that or he just didn't think he had that significant of a part in torch that he didn't give him anything. But, um, yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think that pretty much sums up blank face. Yeah, LP. definitely it's, go check it out. It's, yeah, definitely. it's a great project. Like I said, bought what? it the first day and I didn't look back. I've been bumping it nonstop and that's something you definitely really have to check out. Schoolboy Q's new, new album, Blank Face. Yeah, LP. real quick before we go on that. It's yeah. just funny because I remember I was talking last week about like, you know, the possible album cover for it. Right. And then this one came out and it's like nothing we thought it would be. Oh, not at all. So... I just thought that was interesting. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it definitely. Kinda, like, I mean, it, they had all those teasers, and you're like, "Oh, it's got to be something like this." And right. Had, yeah. I mean, I feel like if he actually did release one of those, like the Cryface Jordan or the the Donald Trump right. blank face, 
like I don't think people would really take it seriously. They it's not a very timeless a thing. Like and, it's it's relevant now, but yeah, it's not and people super would think timeless. it's funny and like get it. But I mean, a couple years down the road, people are gonna look back on it and be like, "Why it's did you do stupid. that?" Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but like this this cover art with the like the guy in the forest and he's in the bottom right with the blade. Looks face. like the cover of a scary think, movie or something. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah, that's, it really makes you, know, you think. It, 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 this is gonna sound weird, but it kind of looks like. Have you ever seen like a fetus in like like an ultrasound? Uh, yeah, not an <laughs> ultrasound, but like you ever seen a picture of a, of a baby growing? And you yeah, know, I like, guess I, I know yeah, what like you're talking a about. Science book or something? It's just I don't know if I you'll agree know. With you on you'll that, know. I, I could pull up a picture right now, and then you guys be like, "Oh yeah." Oh, no, I know. I know what you're know. talking about. I don't know I'm gonna I do it. I'm it, gonna pull it up. Film go for it. Yeah, go for it. Pull it up. But um, yeah, I think we're gonna move on from that. But like I said, blank face LP, Schoolboy Q. Um, perfect follow up to. Oh wait, actually, one more thing I forgot. I want to talk about. Um, Schoolboy actually said in an interview that after Oxymoron, he was debating on whether he would retire from rap, like for good. I remember him saying that. Um, he pretty much his daughter's seven years old. All right, Phil has the picture up. Tell now. me that does not look. It like looks it. like if you it, zoom but I don't in think on it, it looks like an that. egg. Okay, you're gonna have to go search this on Google. What'd you What'd you look up? Fetal though? development. That's ridiculous. All right. <laughs> Go search for right. development. Anyways, it looks or like don't. it. it I don't looks think like you're going to lose any sleep over it. It definitely so, looks like it. I guess. Um, but yeah, like I said, so getting back to a little more important stuff. Um, he said, Sorry, guys. <laughs> he said his daughter was seven years old. Um, he wasn't really around for her life when she, like, for the first two years. And then finally when he started getting into her life, he's been on tour for pretty much a year and a half, then like six months, then another year. So he said he's pretty much been with his daughter for about a year and a half, two years of her seven-year life. And so obviously that's like family's really important to him. And I mean, I think that is obviously a tough decision because he's going to give up his career, what he loves and he makes money from to obviously raise his daughter. And I mean, that's a selfless thing he could do. I mean, I think we're all thankful that he didn't end up giving that up because I mean, he brought us blank face LP, another great album from I him. I think Schoolboy Q is one of the most underrated rappers. We can have a whole show about this. Oh, but definitely. Yeah, we, yeah. I'm really glad that he's obviously continuing down the path of mm-hmm. rapping right. and music. And he does mention his daughter a lot in his songs. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. I mean, Blessed, one of our favorite songs in this group. It gets yeah. his amped up. Like, right. Yeah, Blessed is crazy. Her, his like, last album cover was a picture of his daughter. Right, Yeah, right. it was a picture so. of his daughter. And then he also, on uh, Oxymoron, he had his daughter like have some voice dubs yeah, over it. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Over, I, I remember the first track, Gangster. Gangster. Yeah. Uh, she talked in it, and then there was the uh, pers- uh, it was called like prescription, what, prescription and then slash, slash oxymoron oxymoron or something. Yeah. yeah, and um, like it, that was deep because the prescription, the first that was a two part song. The first half of it was like him talking about all of his like problems with drugs and stuff, and then at the end, like I'm like I I get kind of worked up talking about it because he like she is literally trying to wake him up, and he's like not waking up yeah, because he's on sad. some sort of drug so yeah. i mean that's kind of that meaningful rap that we talk about and i think that that is opening people's eyes when it comes to drugs and stuff of yeah they can kill people so um i think that that's important uh, and yeah. um so yeah i'm like i said i'm really glad he didn't give up rapping obviously after that he's got a huge story to tell and he needs to con- continue to tell it and make great music so um, yeah, I mean, like I said, once again, we keep plugging it, but Blank Face LP, Schoolboy Q's new album, go, go buy it now. It's definitely worth it, and take a listen. All right, this week I'm really excited about our artist on the rise. It's Superboy. Uh, we've talked about some projects and songs that he's had before in the past, um, but we really want to focus on him this week because, like I said, he's one of the best up-and-comers in Chicago. Uh, he's a rapper, singer, and producer from Chicago, um, Phil, if you want to cover a little bit of his past, go for it. Yeah, the biggest thing I want to really talk about is his group that he's in, uh, Hurt Everybody, which was formed back in February of 2014, I believe, right? Yep. yep. Okay, and uh, that group consists of Superboy, obviously, um, Mulatto, and Kari. Yep. yep. Um, those three have, I don't want to say similar style, but, you know, see, they definitely, they're definitely fit in a group together. Yeah. yeah see that, that's one of the things I liked about Hurt Everybody. Um, for those of you who don't know, they're not together anymore. They, they don't have any like bad blood or anything. They just decided to go their separate ways. Right. Um, one of the things I liked about them though, was they do all have their own styles. Mulatto produced for pretty much all the stuff that they've done. Um, and they, they all have their own style. Superboy, like I said, is, has that like sing songy 
um, sound to him. Kari's the more like rapper, rapper guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and they all sound somewhat different, but they come together. And when they are together, um, they like their kind of juxtaposition on stuff. Yeah, it was sounds a good perfect. group to complement each other with. And um, I mean, I'm kind of disappointed they're not together anymore. But um, they're kind of like I, like Danny said, doing their own stuff. Superboy obviously started the new group, Fight Me, with UG Vavy and Shepard Hughes. They have the one track out, Annie, uh, which is also makes an appearance on his new project, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But uh, I'm excited to hear more from that group, just because they also have a really good dynamic, sort of like Hurt Everybody. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I guess we'll see what they come up with. But um, next up, I want to talk about some of his standout projects. When we looked up online, uh, he has a lot of different projects out, it seemed like. I've only heard, I mean, I've probably heard like six or seven of them, but he... Uh, Superboy only has about four on his page right now, uh, which are 2K47, which is a project he had with Hurt Everybody. He had a Magic City EP in 2014, The Dead Occasion in 2015, and then the I'm Done Ballin' EP, which just came out probably a month ago. Yeah, we covered that a little bit. Yeah, we I think we talked about that in episode yeah. three, maybe. Uh, one of those two. Yeah, I remember. Those are three. Mm-hmm. But one three song... One of, I wanted to talk about on 2K47, I think it was one of his bigger songs that they kind of launched out as a group was Gang, yeah, featuring was, McJakins. Mm-hmm, that, McJakins, sorry. Was it Gang? Yeah, it was yeah, Gang. It's, or no, it's Social called Network. Social Network. Yeah, yeah sorry yeah, about yeah. that. The hook yep. was just them saying Gang. But, yeah. Well, no, um, I think it's called Gang, and then in parentheses, it's like Social Network oh, okay. or something. Um, but yeah, um, definitely, I, I agree with you on that. I've seen videos of it live. Um, oh, it's nuts, And dude. yeah, it goes absolutely crazy. Like, people just mosh and oh my god even on stage they it's hurt everybody in uh mick jenkins on stage with a bunch of people i'm assuming they know and they're just going nuts on stage man i i wish i was there to see that at least once definitely i mean even when we just play in the car or something like it it gets you pumped up like yeah um i mean the hook is literally just them repeating like kind of screaming gang over and over um but then when Mick Jenkins and the and the, what Mick Jenkins has the first verse yeah and I love his verse so much I know all the words it's absolutely insane and I mean the verses just add to it like I said the hooks kind of get people pumped the beat is just and, so minimal and then just them going ham over it is just like oh man I get goosebumps even thinking about yeah it. I mean you can feel that energy through the song so that's awesome uh, one of the things I really liked about all of the the projects especially on SoundCloud is you can feel the progression. Magic City EP, which was in 2014, one of the first projects I heard from Superboy, um, like alone. It um, it like had kind of minimal instrumentals. Right. Um, I feel like his singing was a little bit more off key. Like it, it wasn't bad by any means. I still enjoy listening to it. Um, but I, I actually like this past week just to refresh my memory. I went through and listened to all of them kind of in order from year to year, and so you can definitely tell the progression that goes on there. Um, like I said, Magic City EP, it's a little bit more minimal, like the, it's a little bit more offbeat. The dedication, he starts kind of, I don't know if he started practicing singing a little bit more or what, but you can tell he's a little bit more on, on key and he sounds a Probably little just bit better. The experience. And, yeah, yeah, I mean, he's just, yeah, he's been through Getting all comfortable that. comfortable with it too. Right? Yeah, and then, I mean, like I said, 2K47, when he's with Hurt Everybody, he's almost a different musician. Like they, yeah, they right. bring something different out in him and um, it's it he does great both solo and with Hurt Everybody. Um, but then in the I'm Done Ballin' EP with three songs that came out just about a month ago or whatever, um, you can definitely tell like this year is going to be his complete breakout yeah, dude. year. I See, that EP, I was it got me really pumped for this new project, Dead Again 3. Mm-hmm. Um, just I, I love his singing voice, as we said before. And just like he... The one song, uh, VVS Shorty, mm-hmm. he goes from like it's a slower beat at first, he's kind of singing... And then when the beat drops, he's like rapping, and you could—it's just like the the range that he shows is just incredible, and that's what I love about Superboy's progression over the years is that he can just vary his style up based on whatever beat yeah. he's using. You can feel his emotion like portrayed through his yeah. singing and his rapping. Like you, like he's not just there because he wants to get his story out there and he wants to talk into a microphone. Like you can feel the emotion. And everything he's feeling kind of coming through the music and songs that he makes. And yeah, I mean, like we said, um, Dead Again 3 just dropped, um, which is his latest uh, project. It's on SoundCloud. Um, It was kind of long awaited for me. I was really looking forward to hearing a new solo Superboy uh, track. And some of the features on there, Yuji Vavy, Chance, Mm -hmm. uh, Twista, Chicago Legend, and McJenkins. 
and then um like jimmy said before he has he added the song uh annie by his new group fight me uh which once again it's super uh ug vavy and shepherd hughes and um like i said that that song goes absolutely nuts and um i think another thing that was pretty crazy about this is he took two of the three songs off of i'm done off of the i'm done ball and ep that he he released a couple weeks ago and put them on there so he has vvs shorty and i'm not gonna say it but i live in an effing hole he has that song on there as well um and so i wasn't expecting that but when i saw it i was really excited because like i said um vvs shorty is one of my favorite solo songs yeah. by him probably yeah definitely and yeah so i was super excited to see that um one of the things that i really liked was that i mean obviously he had the big chance feature on there and the beat was i think it was like an acoustic guitar or something it was very minimal it seemed like but it just seems like whatever type of beat you put in front of supa he can like go over like vvs shorty is obviously very heavy type of beat like you know there's a lot of go a lot of stuff going on in the instrumental yeah you can switch up his flow yeah and then in the song with chance he can you know he does his singing and he like he he matches whatever he's put on. Yeah, he's I very think, versatile. I think yeah, he just keeps everything fresh. Right. You know, there's you know maybe some of the beats could be something that like a lot of people could rap over, but like you said, he just puts his own style to it. Yeah. And he just changes the dynamic of the song. I mean, obviously, Chance the Rapper is one of the biggest names in in music as it is right now. Um, but and I like I mean, it adds that another dynamic to this project because obviously getting a big name like that or Twista or something is gonna kind of like spring you forward excel like you're gonna excel um but i think that was kind of important to get his name out there because after he had that song um first off like like we said before he didn't get overshadowed on it by any means like he brought his own twist to it his own flair and he did a great job um matching if not almost overshadowing chance i mean i know that's kind of crazy to say but um and i think it was it's good for him too because um like pretty much every huge music um publication whether it's complex hot new hip-hop uh double xl stuff like that they were tweeting out like yeah check out chance's new verse on fellow chicago and superboy's latest tape right and um i think that's just a super important way to get his name out there because people are going to listen to that mm-hmm. song like it and maybe listen to the rest of the tape and yeah hopefully it um, exposes him more to the mainstream yeah it's definitely deserved by him because like i said he's he's worked super hard and he's trying to get his name out there even more one thing i wanted to talk about was uh jubilee the intro track uh of the project i really liked it because it kind of set the tone for the style that he's going to be using mm-hmm. that was another single oh was it a single yeah it, it came bad. out just a couple weeks ago okay but yeah yeah i I never listened to it before I heard the project, to be honest, but um, I, I liked how, you know, he's doing his singing, and then he does the rapping, and it just sets the tone, because, you know, going in the project, I wasn't sure what to expect, because he's kind of had different styles over the different projects that he's released, mm-hmm. but this kind of, like, told me where the project was going. Um, another thing I wanted to mention was, on Cowgirl featuring Twista, I liked how um, Supa kind of, like, he was singing, his part was more of a singing part. Mm-hmm. And he kind of, like, I feel like he kind of let Twista do his thing. He knows Twista's a legend in Chicago, and uh, obviously he wasn't outshadowed, but I kind of I kind of feel like, you know, he can do his singing, and then he's like, yeah, I know Twista would probably kill me on a verse, so I'm just going to let him do his rapping, and I'll kind of back yeah. him up with the singing. I mean, I feel on that song, Cowgirl, that it's different from what Twista does. Twista typically does kind of use, like, a little bit slower R&B right. instrumentals and just rap super fast over them. But that instrumental was almost slower than what you're yeah. used to hearing Twist on, and there's nothing wrong with that. But um, I mean, obviously Twista can—he's a legend, so and he's been in the he game so long. Yeah, he can—he knows how to adjust and make it sound good. Um, so I think that's really important. Um, but yeah, I think one of the things I really like. Another thing I like about Superboy is he uses like metaphors, not necessarily like like a Lil Wayne metaphor, or simile, or something like that. Where he comes out and says it but he doesn't like straight up name something that like he's struggling with like he kind of tiptoes around it gives it a different name and like puts himself in a different situation but explains his struggles through right. that so i think that's mm-hmm. something that's really interesting that yeah, he just not a lot of people it. do yeah so i mean like i said that's something that's really interesting to me and i mean he's gonna keep working obviously he's gonna be at the the lyrical lemonade show this friday once again don't mean to keep plugging it but 
Um, he's somebody you're going to want to see live. He can put on a show. I've seen, I've never seen him live, but I've seen videos. And yeah, I mean, if, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, if there's one thing I know, he's going to definitely put on a show that people aren't going to forget. And I'll tell you what, there's been surprise visits in the past mm-hmm. at shows, so keep your eye out. I mean, someone I mean, may come, someone big may come out on stage to yeah, definitely we'll go to that show. I mean, especially with all these features he's got, you never know what could happen. I'm yeah. thinking Mick Jenkins, man. Yeah. Oh, if be, Mick Jenkins came tight, out, that'd be dude. crazy, but... I'm thinking maybe he heard everybody reunion. We'll see. That, that would, would be cool, be crazy. too. Back, I just, like, I just really like that song, um, Stay Awake, yeah. um, 2K47, right, right. with with Mick and Twista. Like, yeah. That oh, yeah. song was yeah. my favorite mm-hmm. on that album. That'd be that was a great cool track. how both of them came out. Yeah, I think when, I think when Mick, uh, collabs with whether it is just Superboy or hurt everybody as a whole or whoever he just brings that different dynamic and mm-hmm. i mean we've talked about mick before we'll talk about him again but um he is definitely a chicago artist that oh, yeah. is gonna go somewhere just like uh just like Superboy, and for sure i mean he's somebody you got to keep on your radar too if you've never heard of him which you will soon so yeah um yeah i mean like i said Superboy, he is this week's artist on the rise he's putting out big things doing some big things and he's somebody who is if he's not on your radar now you're going to start hearing about him everywhere so Superboy, go check him out on soundcloud and like i said check him out at the lyrical lemonade show this friday uh, july 15th and last but not least uh, we're going to start doing something new this week where Phil, our resident drill expert, drill, time uh, Phil. drill Martin okay. over there, he's going to um, go over a, uh, a tape, a project, something that a drill artist, whether it's from Chicago or outside of Chicago, um, he's going to let you guys know what you should listen to. So if you're getting into drill music, you know what to listen to. Or if you're a longtime fan, you can go back and listen to it again this week. So um, go, why don't you take it over, Phil? Yeah, it's just, just briefly before I, before I name it. <laughs> Briefly, it's gonna be old and new mixtapes. So like, I'm talking like way back, or like brand new just came out. Right. Like any any range. So basically, it's just an it's just a way for you guys. Like if you guys are trying to get a little, little more into a different style of music or whatever, just pick it up, listen to it, listen to one mixtape, and uh, yeah. What do you got just, for us today? J- just say it already, Phil. All right, <laughs> My heart's beating. <laughs> Well, we talked about G Herbo, I think, on the uh, XXL freshman class, and uh, it's Welcome to Phaseo Land. Oh, definitely classic check tape. that out. It's a Ooh, classic tape. Phaseo Land, what a classic. Yep. It's a classic tape. Definitely check that out. Yeah, dude, go back and listen to that this week. I'll definitely. tell you that. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, I'm looking forward to what you got for us next week, but oh, for now, good stuff go listen pocket. to Welcome to Phaseo Land pocket. by G Herbo. <laughs> so, all right, guys. Yeah, that's our show. Um, thanks for listening. Please show us support and let us know how we can get better. Feel free to share topics, songs, artists, and ideas uh, for us to talk about in the future. You can do this by following our Twitter, which is at scruff underscore squad. And like us on Facebook, which is scruff squad presents the broadcast from the birds. Yes, guys, please stay up to date on our Twitter and Facebook. We got a ton of information for you there. Um, guys, our YouTube account is up and running. We got our podcast episode four on there, right? Yep. And um, we're going to be using it a lot. So we're going to be very active on YouTube. So definitely, definitely go on our YouTube page. Subscribe. And um, our Mixcloud and Soundcloud, we're done using Soundcloud for a little bit. We're still going to be keeping you up to date on the uh, playlist. On the playlist. But our uh, shows will definitely be on Mixcloud. So go check it out on Mixcloud too. Um... Also, feel free to email us at scruffsquad60154 at gmail.com. And uh, remember, stay up to date with us on social media because our website is coming soon. I know it's been a little bit, but it's yeah. still in the works. Yeah, we're right just now, we're get trying to get for pictures and logos. Right, we're still trying to make it perfect before we put it out. But yeah. definitely, like I said, if you guys stay up to date on social media and Facebook, on uh, Twitter and Facebook, on our social media, you guys will know. So. It's coming, definitely. So once again, thanks for tuning in, guys, and stay tuned for our next episode. Thanks, guys.